All right, well, the next person we're bringing up on the stage, or persons, is the Rockerbox team. Um, I met Josh, it's been probably four or five years ago, and he first started working at uh, Viral Marketing and was with Viral for over three years as a Viral Marketing success coach. He got to travel the world with Frank Klesitz and be introduced to a lot of different teams and brokerages across the country. Um, he had a passion for lead conversion and outbound calling, and that's where he and Spring were able to connect and start off kind of this beta idea that, you know, he had this idea that agents weren't very good at making phone calls to internet leads. And I don't know why they had that perception, right? And so obviously that's one of the biggest dysfunctions in the business. Everyone's, the sexy thing is lead gen. Everyone wants to talk about lead gen. No one wants to talk about the work necessary to convert the leads that are coming off the internet or any lead in general. And so Josh was willing to tackle that. And it was interesting, Brett Clark talking about choosing the, the path that no one else took that tells you you're crazy to do it. The idea of thinking, oh, I'm gonna create an organization whose job is to call internet leads, you know, that first and foremost is insane, right? I'm gonna have all these people calling on all these leads for agents and teams across the country, and that was his idea. Uh, today, they've trained over 200 virtual, not virtual assistant, um, callers at their call center. You can see, you saw the cameras in the back and we're wondering why we're watching security cameras. That's actually the Rockerbox office live right now. They've trained over 200 callers within College Station. Most are college students, Josh will speak to that and they've called millions of internet leads and converted hundreds if not thousands of leads for their clients. So let's put our hands together and welcome Josh Cunningham to the stage. Howdy folks, my name is Josh Cunningham. Thank you, Jeff. Did you say the seventh cousin thing yet? I didn't, yet? tell him about it. Okay, that'll be a, that'll be a cocktail hour story. Uh, <laughs> Jeff and I are seventh cousins. Long story, we'll tell you later. Anyway, like I said, my name is Josh Cunningham. I'm the founder and CEO of Rockerbox. Uh, very, very excited to be here today to be a part of the first uh, annual team building summit. Um, as Jeff mentioned for, uh, earlier, this is actually an event that, that four companies have gotten together and, and put it on so that we could focus on a room of people that we really want to talk to, which is a team full of uh, team builders, right? There's a lot of real estate agents out there or real estate events that are, that are keyed towards agents, maybe becoming a team or things of that sort. But, um, we're going to dive a little bit deeper in my presentation here about how all of our companies sort of coexist. But uh, again, very excited to be here at the Team Building Summit. My topic today, I'm going to share with you some information about conversion secrets, uh, since that is what we do. That's what we specialize in at Rockerbox. Uh, and then I also want to talk to you a little bit more about millennial engagement. So a um, couple things here. I'm going to first take a step back and kind of give you a little bit of uh, perspective of where I'm coming from, where all this information is coming from. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Rockerbox story. Um, how I got to be speaking before you on stage today. Um, also want to stake, take another step back and look at the big picture when it comes to the real estate transaction cycle, something I like to call the customer life cycle, how to turn a complete stranger into a happy and satisfied customer. And then we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the portion of that customer life cycle that we're in control of at Rockerbox, which is sort of the lead conversion techniques. And I'm gonna teach you some of the things that we do day in and day out at our office that you can obviously deploy at your offices to increase your conversion. Uh, but lastly, what I really want to talk about, um, what I'm really excited about being here today, is really millennial engagement. Uh, like Jeff said, over the last five years, we've trained over 200 ISAs, and we are located in College Station, Texas. All of our employees are millennials. Um, and again, I'm going to get into some stats later on, but in the next seven years, it's predicted that 75% of the workforce is going to be made up of millennials. So we've got some tips and some tricks and some uh, things to teach you, some best practices on how you can actually hire, attract, and retain the best quality talent when it comes to millennials. So it's story time, guys. Uh, one of the things I always like to say is the definition of luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. And something happened in my life in a Las Vegas uh, casino that changed my life forever about seven years ago. And no, I didn't lose all my life savings or hit a big jackpot. Uh, I met this guy right here, who a lot of you are familiar, familiar with, Frank Klesitz from Bio Marketing. Uh, I met Frank and just kind of hit it off with him, started talking entrepreneurship and sales and marketing. Really had no idea what he was or what he was doing while he was at this real estate conference. But I began to follow up with this company called Viral Marketing. And after seeing all of the people that he worked with, that he was working with all the top clients at this real estate event we had just come from, and seeing that he was using social media marketing and video and YouTube back in 2011, this was a hot topic. And so I literally reached out to Frank on Facebook and I said, hey Frank, uh, how can I work for Viral Marketing, but I don't really want to move to Omaha. Sorry, Jeff, I just 
didn't want to move to Omaha. So Frank said, hey, if you're serious, like, let's, let's talk about it. And so we did, and I uh, learned a little bit more about his organization. At the time, they had about 35 clients. They had uh, two employees at Viral Marketing. Uh, but I saw the vision, and I saw the opportunity, and I saw that uh, putting myself around a, a smart guy like Frank Klesitz uh, and working with some of the top real estate agents in the country would definitely further my career and, and, and allow me to invest in myself. So I said, let's do it. And over the course of the next two or three years, I had one of the most unique educations in the real estate space. And that was because I spent about two or three weeks out of every month rooming with Frank Klesitz. And I can, I can attest to Katie Klesitz. She's got one of the toughest jobs in the world. Uh, but I was his roommate for about two to three weeks out of every single month as we were traveling the country going to every single real estate event we could go to. So we would go to all the different masterminds, all the different coaching organizations, all the different real estate franchises to obviously grow our marketing. And again, when I joined, they had about 35 clients. They now boast about uh, 535 clients. So kudos to, to the team of our marketing. But essentially, we were growing the business. But along the way, we were rubbing elbows with the top thought leaders in the industry. And we were learning not only what they were doing to be successful, but more importantly, what they were, what they were struggling with. And I'll never forget the, well, the very first Boomtown Mastermind I was at a couple years ago, actually 2011. Uh, there's a nice picture of... Uh, Rivers, Rivers in the building? No, he must have stepped out. Me, Rivers, and Greer there, Greer there. Someone must have been armed with a one megapixel digital camera to snap this. But that was the very first Boomtown Mastermind, and there was about 50 people in a U-shaped room. And everybody went around the room and said, share with us what is your greatest strength right now, and share with us what is the greatest opportunity in your business. And about 80% of the room all had the same common frustration. What do you think it was? A room full of Boomtown people, all sharing their biggest frustration. Is that the agents weren't following up with the leads. Right? They're investing all this hard earned cash, money, and effort and energy into creating opportunity for their agents, and their agents just didn't see the opportunity, and they were just sitting on their hands and doing nothing with the leads. Right? And so I knew, I turned to myself, I turned to Frank, and we looked at each other, we said, it smells like opportunity. Right? If you're ever in a room of a lot of the most successful people complaining about something consistently, it smells like opportunity. Right? And so fast forward about two years later, I was sitting in another mastermind with one of my best friends, Spring Benson. And she had a Boomtown account, and she was about to cash in and say, I'm done with this internet lead thing. And I said, Spring, you got to hire an ISA. Don't you hear what everybody's talking about, this ISA thing? You need to go do that. That's what you need to go do, right? I'm the, I'm the master of hypothetical information, right? So she said, Josh, this is way easier said than done. Why don't you actually help me? Is this something you can help me do? Can you help me hire an ISA? Like, you work with a lot of the teams that are doing this at a high level. Can you learn from them and help me implement these strategies? And I said, sounds like a great one-time consulting project. And so I hopped on an airplane and I flew to Utah and I spent about two months living in Spring's unfinished basement while we trained her very first ISA and her all-star team of agents to grow her business and to implement all these hypothetical models into her business and start crushing it, right? We took studious notes in all these masterminds. Now we're just going to roll out all the strategies and we're going to crush it, right? Well, our first attempt was not anything close to a success. It was quite a gleaming failure. But the most important thing about failing in life is what? That we learn from our mistakes, that we fail forward, and we pick ourselves up and we try again bigger and better than the last time. So in order for you to avoid the most costly mistakes, there's a couple lessons that we learned very, very early that helped us out later on in the road. The first one was the difference between productivity and availability. We all talk about prospecting. We all talk about getting on the phone, smiling and dialing. But there's a big difference between outbound prospecting versus inbound prospecting. See, outbound prospecting is all about productivity, right? How many dials, how many contacts, uh, how are you doing on your skills and your objection handlers and things like that? How productive of a caller are you? But meanwhile, when it comes to inbound leads, when people are actually visiting your website, you're, it's, it's more about availability, right? Are you there in the time and place that they need you to be? So we learned that very quickly because we had hired someone to be in the office from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, and we unfortunately learned that the internet is actually open after 5 p.m. and also on weekends. It's crazy. Uh, the next lesson that we learned is we had put this person in this role, and she was obviously aspiring to, to soon someday become a real estate agent. And so she was taking conversations way too far that she shouldn't have, right? Like looking up very specific information in MLS and just, just being a resource, just regurgitating information to people. So the goal is not necessarily to, for the person in this role to be the resource. The goal for them is to be resourceful, right? Is to learn everything about the other person, not tell them about themselves. And so this is more of a customer service role than a sales specialist. A sales specialist is normally going to try to woo you with all their knowledge and insights, but that's not necessarily needed in the first greeting. It's more of a customer service role. The conversation needs to be about the other person, what their wants and needs are, not about yourself. So we realized that very early on. And the other thing, like I said, the person we hired right away, she saw all the commission checks floating around the office, and she went to Spring and marched right in her office and said, Spring, 
signing up for real estate classes, right? So there we were, right back at square one, uh, and we had no talent to, to, to put in the position. We understood what systems we needed to be following, but we had no talent in the position. So we understood that very well. It's a highly transient position. And the other thing is, this was the only person in Spring's office really doing this. She really didn't have a team of people prospecting on a daily basis. So she was like the lone wolf locked away in the closet in the corner, the only one who actually uses a phone to do business. And so there's that lone wolf mentality where you're the only person doing the only thing and nobody else is around you supporting you and helping you and helping you grow. So we understood that we needed an environment where people could learn and produce and have fun at the same time. So these were our first lessons learned. From that, I then said, don't worry, Spring, I got it. I'm going to go back to College Station and build a company. I'm going to call this company Rockerbox. Do any of y'all know what a Rockerbox is? A Rockerbox is that. It's an old gold mining tool used to separate sand and gravel from uh, the flakes of gold. And so that's the metaphor that we use to talk about the work that we do. Because as you all know, there's a lot of leads that come through your system. And a lot of them are dust and dirt and, and, and junk. But those few flakes of gold make it all worthwhile. So that's essentially what we are today. We are a Rockerbox. Spelled a little bit differently, uh, but we're essentially a professional real estate service firm. We help you connect uh, your agents with serious um, motivated buyers and sellers. And over the course of the last five years, we've worked over a million leads and we've trained over 200 ISAs. Uh, we've built an awesome headquarters in College Station. Uh, like Jeff said, we've got a live stream in the back of the room. So come on over there and check it out. We'd love to show off our business. We'd love to show you what we built. But uh, that is kind of my story, just so you guys kind of understand the perspective that I'm going to come from with the rest of the information that I'm going to share with you today. So, like I said, I want to kind of take a step back here and take a little bit uh, of a broader view of what goes on in a real estate transaction when you take a complete stranger and you turn them into a happy and satisfied customer. So the first thing that you have to do in business is you have to attract traffic. You have to make it known what problem it is that you solve. There's many, many ways to do this. You can pick up the phones and cold prospect. You can pay a celebrity to endorse you on television. You could buy billboards, radio ads. You could send out videos, create a video blog. There's many different ways that you can make it known what problem it is that you solve. But the next step in the transaction, or the customer life cycle, I'm sorry, is to capture those leads, right? To actually gather their information. Once you've gathered their information, you can stay in touch with them and now you have to actually nurture that prospect. You have to get them to know, like, and trust who you are who you represent and what services you're gonna provide for them. And at that point, you finally are ready for the conversion of the sale. And like Spring said earlier, the biggest myth in real estate is that you guys sell homes. You guys don't sell homes. You sell professional services, so you're selling yourself. So the conversion of the sale in real estate is actually made when you get someone to sign on the line which is dotted, right? The buyer rep agreement, the seller agreement. That's actually when they become a customer of yours. At that point, You've got them to sign on the line, which is dotted. Now you have to actually service what's in that agreement. What are you promising them when you get them to sign a buyer rep agreement? What are you promising them when you get them to sign a listing agreement? And of course, the most important part of the transaction that we all love is when we get paid, is the close of the transaction. You actually found them their dream home and the offer was submitted and everything came together and everybody gets paid. And then the last part where everybody loves to forget about, which is why Frank started a company called Viral Marketing, is referral, right? You just spent all this time getting someone to know, like, and trust you and enjoy your experience and your brand and be part of your tribe. You can't, you don't want to let go of them forever. So. Let me give you a, a, another rundown of how this looks like in the world that I'm very, very familiar with, which is the online leads. So if we look at attracting traffic, what are the many different sources that we have to attract traffic? We've got Google AdWords, we've got Facebook, we've got the aggregator websites, Craigslist. So those companies we invest in to drive traffic to our website. And then that's where our really good friends at Boomtown do a great job of actually providing a really good website that people get, see a lot of value in. And then when Boomtown asks for them to go ahead and offer up their registration information to continue to have access to it, now you've captured that information. So now you've got their name, phone number, and their email address. At that point, you need to obviously scrub all these leads. You need to figure out who in the heck is actually motivated and serious and who is just kicking tires or spying on their neighbor. That's what we do at Rockerbox. And again, once we've gotten on the phone with someone, we've identified that they're serious and motivated and they actually want to talk to a realtor and they actually want to transact real estate in the next 90 days. At that point, we're handing it over to the agent. But again, there's so many different steps and so many different variables involved in that agent experience that that's why we like to lean on our friends at ERS to provide coaching for people to learn how to schedule appointments, uh, do a buyer presentation, have people sign a buyer rep agreement, uh, implement a, a showing assistant model, right? These are all the things, the agent activities that can affect your, your end bottom line. And then obviously, Dot Loop is a wonderful uh, organization that helps us streamline your contract close process. And then again, 
our good friends of Viral Marketing will help you stay in touch with those leads once they do convert to a client long term. So I want to kind of run some numbers through you here really quick, because again, we've been doing this for about five years. We've been working with hundreds of real estate clients and we've got tons and tons of data to work with, but these are generally the averages. This is what it actually takes for someone to transact when it, in the internet lead world. So what we know with all the information is that about a thousand lead, uh, visitors will visit your website from any of your, any of your queues, whether it be Google or Craigslist or Facebook, whatever. Thousand visitors land on your website and as soon as your CRM prompts them to create a registration, 900 of them just peace out. They say, nope, not getting information from me today. So those thousand visitors become about 100 registrations. You can all look at your visit to lead opt-in ratios, but that's roughly the national average. About 1,000 people visit your website to turn into 100 registrations. Now, what we know at Rockerbox, we call people right away. We're open 80 hours a week. We call them a whole bunch of times. We scrub the leads. We stay in touch with them long term. But essentially, what we track and report back to our client each month is, hey, you gave us the 100, and on average, we give back to our clients 15. So about 15% conversion. 10 to 15%, depending on what part of the market you're in. Uh, some areas it's even higher, but let's just use conservative numbers here. So about 15 people will turn into an opportunity. That's the language that we use at Rockerbox. And so this is a hot and ready a buyer or seller. They want to speak to an agent. They're not contractually obligated. They probably want to even talk to your lender as well. So of those 15, we know that we throw it out into the, the random world of real estate variables, right? We all know that all agents are not created equal. So we don't really know what happens at that point. Do you schedule an appointment? Do you have them to come in the office? Do you just show up and show them property and open the door and, and turn yourself into an Uber driver? Like what does the process look like at that point? But what we can tell you is whatever happens with the conversion and whatever happens with the servicing is that at the end of the day in dot loop, we've got about one to three closed deals. So it's literally a thousand people, a thousand human beings came to your website. You asked for their registration information, 900 said no. Now we had a hundred. We scrubbed them, we handed over 15, and then through your processes of, again, selling your services, demonstrating to someone why they should work with you and not the other thousands of realtors in your MLS, all through all those processes, we know that it's gonna typically wind up in about one to three closed deals. And then on the back end, of course, if you follow your viral marketing strategy and you put them in your database and stay in touch with them long term, you know that you can expect to get about 10% of that transaction uh, each year as a referral or repeat business. So again, guys, I know that uh, you might have been a little confused as, this, as the messaging of what the Team Building Summit was all about, but again, all of us kind of got together and realized how, how much we uh, sort of assist you guys in building a team of experts. You know, the natural, um, the natural evolution of most people in real estate is they start as a me, myself, and I operation, and then they eventually move on to a team of generalists. They're surrounded by a bunch of people kind of doing a bunch of different things, but the end goal is to create yourself a team of specialists. And so that's what you're uh, armed here with is a, is a bunch of vendors that can help you guys uh, improve your business. And you know, if you want to double your business from, from this year to next year, it's not about doing all of these things twice as good. It's literally about doing one of these things twice as good. And if you follow the funnel, it'll literally double your business by the end of the year. So. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into what in the heck Rockerbox does and I can share some stats with you and some information and some strategies so that you can go back home and inspect your lead conversion strategies to see how many opportunities you're getting out of these. So what in the world is trending on uh, in the online lead generation market? Well, let's first look at the home sales market and over the last 10 years, despite all the dips and recessions, every year, year in and year out, we have about four to five million homes that are sold right, over the last 10 years. Now the scary statistic is that in the online lead generation world, about 10 years ago, there was only 2.7 million online registrations for the four or five million transactions. Now over the course of the years, that has literally hockey pucked. It's predicted that last year there was 125 million registrations created for the exact same number of four to five million transactions. So what does that tell you? It's an incredibly hot and competitive market. So can you just say, well, that sounds too competitive. I don't even want to. I don't even want to bother with that. Well, unfortunately, you can't just bury your head in the sun, be, in the sand, because 93% of all home buyers uh, use the internet to search homes. So this is from NAR statistics from 2017. A couple other fascinating statistics is, uh, and these this is home buyers that were pulled. I know a lot of times people like to get caught up on the data that's going on in their CRM about their home browsers, but home browsers don't don't turn into commission checks. Home buyers are the ones that you want to actually service. So this is, this is the answers from home buyers. So Mr. Home Buyer, what was the first step that you took when you were determining whether or not you're going to buy a home? Well, the first thing they did was they looked online for properties. Only 17% of them actually reached out to a realtor. 
hey, what a crazy concept. Why would you actually reach out to a professional to seek out expertise? And these are people that were actually motivated to buy. They wound up buying. So for all the people that bought, for 44% of them, the first step they took was just go online and just type in some keywords into Google. Right? And the most fascinating statistic that I've uncovered in all my research, and this is actually really, really scary because it's, the numbers has jumped from time to time, but when asked, what is the primary reason for the timing of your home purchase, and given a multiple answer suggestion, like pricing or availability of homes or financing of homes, the number one reason for the timing of someone's home purchase is that it was just the right time. Right? So they were given all these logical reasons as to why they determined why they're going to buy a home. And their answer was, I don't know, it was just the right time. And what's even more fascinating is last year when I did this presentation, it was 44%. It went up from 44 to 55 in one year. So what is that telling us, guys? That despite the fact that you're engaging in one of the, most, the biggest transactions you'll ever engage in your entire life, it's still very much an emotional decision. Right? People aren't using a bunch of data and information to make the decision to make a huge investment in their lives. So if it's an emotional decision, let's think about who we are as consumers these days. Right? Ten years ago, when I showed you that diagram back when there was only 2.7 million registrations, that was 27, or 2007 was the year that Netflix began streaming online video. Can you think how different your lives have been over the last ten years? Ten years ago is when they first started streaming online video. The world we live in has changed. I don't know anybody who actually watches live television. So by a show of hands, who actually, when you watch television, you watch it on DVR, HBO Go, Amazon Prime, Netflix, every single person in the room, right? Nobody watches live television anymore. We're in an instant gratification society. And we're in an information overload society. There's so much information now, right? There's 125 million registrations that real estate teams are all chasing around. It's just information. We can't excuse the fact that the real tangible thing that's going on here is only about four or five million people are buying homes. So we're in an instant information overload, instant gratification society. The best time to make contact with a lead is when they're in an emotional peak state. Right? Something happened in their life. Something triggered them and caused them to go to the internet, search for keywords, and start their home search. That's when you want to contact them. So here's the secrets. I know they're going to be just earth-shattering secrets here. <laughs> Here's an old statistic from uh, InsightSales.com, as you can see from this diagram right here. If you wait between just five minutes and ten minutes to call a lead and registration, your chances of contacting them decreases by 400% by waiting just five to ten minutes. Right? So I know a lot of you, when you have your accountability conversations with your agents, it's, hey, how, how often are you, or what's your time to first call? Oh, you know, we get to it that day, or maybe that hour, or we have a 24-hour cycle. Oh, well, that's great, because if you don't get with, to it within five minutes, you have a 400% decrease that you're even going to get to them when you call them in 10 minutes. So what's the secret there? Well, you got to call the leads within five minutes, right? At Rockerbox, you guys can go take a look at the screen to see how we operate. We basically, we're, we're a human business. We're a human organization. We're not using technology to cut corners. We're using technology to facilitate human interactions. So you'll actually see we have real human beings walking around an office, and when someone registers, we pick up the phone and we call them. It's really that simple. And we call our leads within about a minute and a half. So the standard is five, but realistically, we're probably, we're probably calling them a minute and a half. And again, if someone registered on your site, they probably registered on 17 others. The other important secret is that most people don't try enough times. This is a diagram that demonstrates your chances of contacting a lead. If you actually try six or seven times, your, your chances increase by 90% of contacting that lead. The problem that most of you have with not having good lead conversion is you're just not trying enough times. This is, how many people, this is how many times people are actually trying. So as you can see, there's a huge gap for opportunity in what you need to do to actually get a hold of people and what people are actually doing to get a hold of people. It's just they're not trying hard enough. So I'm sorry that these earth-shattering secrets were just really that simple because the, the punchline is it still requires work. Right? There really is no, there's no shortcut. It's just knowing what the right thing is to do it and to actually do it. The other thing, uh, again, we've got tons and tons of data. We've worked over almost a million leads. Here's another shattering statistic. When it, when it comes to converting leads, engaging in conversations with people, it's crazy that actually like calling people and texting people is where all the results come from. You only get 1% conversion via email. So again, you guys don't want to put yourselves out of business by, by not trying to do any work. Right? There's a lot of people that talk about an age of change and the realtor is extinct and this and that and the other. But essentially, if you, if you try to not make yourself useful, then you'll become useless. 
you have to very much understand that you're still very much a, a, a person offering a professional service and that the only way that you can win the deal and keep your business moving forward is to sell those professional services, is to conversate pe with people over the phone, is to engage in conversations via text messages. Don't sit back and hide behind technology and expect someone else to do the work for you. So those are the cold hard facts, guys. The punchline is it still requires work. And fortunately, there's still demand for humans in society. So keep betting on that. So again, guys, another big picture about you know, the whole customer life cycle. This is, again, just what we do here. We call the leads right away, and we call them a whole bunch of times. What do you think needs to happen when we hand it over to the agent? They got to call them right away. And if they don't answer, they got to call them a whole bunch of times. Right? It really is that simple. These are the strategies, again, that all of our, our companies sort of align with. So hope you got some information really about the nurture phase there. But again, we all sort of coexist to help drive more business. And, and like Spring said, the point of this isn't necessarily just to put all of your eggs in one basket. It's by diversifying your business, it gives, it gives you freedom to allow your agents to bring more business, right? So that you're not relying on them to just pay your, pay your expenses, right? You can actually empower them to grow your businesses with you. So next thing I want to talk about is millennial engagement. See how much time do I have? A few minutes. All right. What's the time? We're in at 3.45? Cool. Got you guys. Okay, I got plenty of time here. So why are we talking about millennials today? Again, when we started thinking of a concept of building the team building summit, I'm like, okay, well, I can talk to people about internet leads, but that's the same old, same old. But really when we started talking about the, the answering the question why, right? Like why someone would come work for your team, uh, what are the opportunities that you have to provide for them? Then I really started thinking, well, one of the things that we really have a lot of expertise in is hiring and training people, building a really good culture. And I know that the, the industry is changing. The professional workforce is changing right now. It's about one in every three people in the professional workforce are millennial. But in just seven years, it's predicted that 75% of the workforce is going to be made up of millennials. So I said, okay, well, I got to come here and I got to share some of these awesome headaches and frustrations that I've learned the hard way of what some, maybe some shortcuts that I can give you guys. So again, the goal here um, is to talk about some of the things that we've done. Again, we didn't come out of right out of the gates with the awesome, most awesome hiring and training process, uh, but we've learned along the way. And again, we've done it with a really big data point of, uh, of working with students at Texas A&M. So let's think about what is the ideal situation for a millennial? Like what is the stereotype uh, other than that they're lazy and don't do anything and want everything handed them? Let's actually think about the ones that are in the workforce, right? So, so sort of the common themes are that they want meaningful work. They want to make, they want to know that their life matters, that their contributions are actually meaningful. They also want close and immediate feedback. They love having strong relationships with their superiors. They love having strong relationships with the people that answer to them. Um, but they like that close and immediate feedback. Um, they also look for their job to be in a creative outlet for them to learn and expand, find out things they like doing, find out things they don't like doing. It's not just a paycheck. It's not just clocking in and clocking out. And another thing that millennials are uh, stereotypically accustomed to or, or attracted to is the fact that they like team uh, oriented environment. So uh, group projects, everybody's opinion matters, everybody gets to contribute, uh, those types of environments. So I want you to be thinking of these things as I kind of walk you through what our hiring and training process is and, and, and see if you feel like maybe these are some things that we're reinforcing on a daily basis. So first thing I want to talk about, uh, again, we are located right across the street from Texas A&M University. We're located in College Station, Texas. That's literally our office and that's literally campus, so we can see campus right across the street. So again, we've got a great deal of experience in actually hiring and training millennial talent, so let's look at what that actual process is. So we're in College Station. Uh, we have a relationship with the Career Centers. We have a job posting up there, as well as a couple other sites, but it's a very basic hiring process. Job posting, uh, now it kind of scares me when I'm a part of some of the Facebook groups and people are like, I'm thinking about hiring my first ISA. Does anybody have a job posting I can borrow? Like, wow, does this sound like meaningful work? Does, does, this, does this sound like a creative outlet? Like, you can't even describe what the job is. That's, 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 that's a really, really, really bad start. You're probably not going to attract a millennial and retain a millennial if you don't even know how to describe what the job is. That doesn't sound like very meaningful work. So you got to have a job posting. It has to sound like meaningful work, right? We have our uh, candidates send us a resume. We reply back to the resume and say, hey, take this disc personality assessment. And it's cool because for a lot of these kids, it's the first time they've ever taken something like this before. And so it's a really good learning opportunity for them. And obviously, we're trying to figure out do they qualify and, and sort of fit the, fit, fit the personality. But for them, it's a learning opportunity because we say, take this personality assessment, read the review, and then write us an essay on how well you feel that it actually uh, 
uh, you know, did it represent you well? Did it not represent you at all? And for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these kids, it's the first time they've ever heard these things said about themselves. And they're like, yeah, that is how I think. Yeah, that is what motivates me. Oh, I am motivated by these things. So it's a really great exercise. So they write us back and let us know about their disc, uh, their disc profile. We pick up the phone and do a phone interview, which for us is great because obviously the work is done over the phone. We invite them in for an in-person interview, typical in-person interview questions. But here's the most important part of our hiring process. And this is something that I think that really hits home to the millennials, someone looking for meaningful work, someone to be in a team-oriented environment, um, is we actually let them know at this point, in step five, we know if someone can cut it. So we basically tell them, hey, uh, you know, candidate A, love your interview today, loved all your qualifications. Um, we really feel like you would thrive in this role. We feel like you would do a really good job at this position. However, the next step in the interview process is to invite you back for an observation. This is your opportunity to interview us. Right? We already know you're going to be good. Like I, I can tell from all the resumes and all the disc profiles and all the interviews, I know that you can pick up the phone and make phone calls to buyer leads. But are you going to enjoy doing it? Are you going to crave doing it? Are you going to see it as an opportunity to grow yourself? And so we say, come back into the office. We're going to set you up with one of our most senior reps. They're going to give you a full tour of the operation. Ask as many questions as you want. You're going to have a full hour to figure out exactly what it is we are, exactly what you're going to do. There's, there's no, there's no you know, trying to be a bright and shiny object here. We're going to show you exactly what you're going to be doing on your day-to-day -day basis. And then we say, at the conclusion of that observation, I need you to write me a brief email. Let me know what you think about the company. Let me know if you feel like you would be a fit in our organization. And it's absolutely phenomenal to see some of, the, some of the emails that we get back from these kids. This is just a screenshot from a simple email. But as you can see, they're basically writing me a persuasive essay on why our company is so great and why they want to work for it and why this isn't just going to be a job for them, but this is going to be an opportunity for them to grow as a young professional. And I actually had some time on the plane ride over here just to read through some of my old emails. But these are some of the things that I pulled out that just stared at me in these emails. Family rather than just coworkers. A great experience that can, be, that can better me for my future. This company is different. Makes me excited to be able to learn. Supportive and uplifting. A lot of positive reinforcement. Successes are rewarded. High energy and competitive attitude. I feel that I would start to become addicted to meeting my goals at work. Has fun with each other while also focusing on the task at hand. So do you think these guys, are these, is this ringing to the tune of attracting that stereotypical millennial? And this is the greatest compliment you can ever receive about the culture of your organization, is invite a complete stranger into your company and say, hey, what'd you think? And they're pointing out things here that we've made a big deal out of. I always say, it's only as big of a deal as you make it. And so when we have people pointing these things out and saying, yes, successes are rewarded, what do you think we make more of an emphasis on? Rewarding successes, acknowledging people. Right? So you just listen, listen to the people in your organization. What is it that is important to them? What, what makes them feel good? What makes them feel like their work is valued or the work they do is worthwhile? And, and these are the things that they're telling right back to us. So again, would you all agree that these are some of the things that the millennials are attracted to? Are we doing a good job with our observation process? So let's move along here. Uh, they've, they've signed on, they're gonna start at Rockerbox. What are some other things that we're doing to prepare this millennial for their, for, for their best experience yet within our organization? Well, we have an orientation, uh, the company history. They need to know who we are, wh what we do, wh where we've come from. Uh, we actually have an entire script and workbook with homeworks and quizzes that we hand out to them. It's like a, literally a bound packet that we hand to them on the first day. What this ties into, guys, is that people want to know what's expected of them. Right? People don't like failing. And again, this millennial generation where everybody got a trophy and nobody wants to fail, like it's not to say that they're worth, worthless, but you just have to know how to speak to them and inspire them. Well, people don't like failing, so let's not set them up for failure. Let's say, these are all the scripts. These are all the objections. This is your homework on this night. This is your quiz on this day when you show up. This is exactly what's gonna be expected of you and exactly how we're gonna grade you. And one of the most important tools that we have, we have four four-hour shifts. It's one-on-one -on -one coaching. We also have a private training room. If you look at that call center in the back, it's a bit of an intimidating work, uh, work environment. So we actually have a private training room. So your first couple shifts, when you're screwing up on the phone, you don't have to get embarrassed in front of your peers, right? It's kind of one of those handling our, handling our team with, with little kid gloves, right? But if you set someone up for success the right way, they're going to be successful. The other most important tip that I want to share with you here is a customer service evaluation. How many of you in your business have something like a customer service evaluation where you can actually grade a score on what a customer experience is like? Not very many. 
So here's what you need to do. You need to sit back and think, what is the ideal customer experience when someone comes and works with ABC Real Estate? And map that out from beginning to end. We use an acronym called CARE, contact, ask questions, recommend, encourage. And we've broken this script down and we've figured out every single thing that needs to happen at every single point in the conversation. And we've literally written it down and scorecarded it and checkboxed it out and let people know how they can be an amazing performer and how they can be a mediocre performer. But it's very, very, very clear. It's laid out right in front of them. So again, this is another one of those millennial things is they like to know what's expected of them. They like to have all their training and everything laid out to them so that they can know how to be, achie to be an achiever. They can know how you're grading their performance. At that point, once we have the talent trained up and they're on our, 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 our floor, they're obviously delivering great service to our clients, but the most important thing is not just training them up to do the job, is to continue to invest in that talent. And so here's some things that we do. Again, we're talking about successes are rewarded and people like being in a team-oriented environment. So we actually have Top Gun Awards, which are individual awards for our top achievers. We actually have our, our entire organization is broke up, broken up into squads. And so we have squad competitions amongst each other. We secret shop our, ourselves um, about 16 times a month uh, and actually grade ourselves on that and have contests on that type of stuff. Uh, we have masterminds and workshops, which I'm about to get into. But the other thing that we do over and over and over is we're constantly living by our core values. It's not just something that everybody regurgitated and, and did in their new employee training. It's not just something that we put up on the wall and looks neat. But literally in every single one of our masterminds and every single one of our workshops and in every single one of our daily huddles, we give everybody an opportunity to acknowledge someone else in the room for following our core values. It's a really great pay it forward type system. I want to acknowledge Frank for having fun while being the best because I saw him yesterday doing this. Oh, thanks. I want to acknowledge so-and-so for uh, demonstrating res or earning respect by demonstrating respect. They did this in the office yesterday. So core values aren't just something that, you know, it was a trendy thing in the late 90s, early 2000s in business school. Like these millennials actually like this stuff. And it's actually very, very natural to them. They like being a part of something bigger than themselves. So what is that? Who are you as an organization? And how many times are you reminding yourself of who you are as an organization? So those, that core value recognition is really important. Like I said, I wanted to elaborate a little bit more on masterminds and workshops. Uh, really, this spawned from just my personal experience. I know that I've grown a lot in my life by investing in um, you know, other thought leaders and, and, and tapping into people who have more experience than I have. Uh, and like I said, when I was traveling the country with Frank, we bought our way into some of the most prestigious masterminds and, and, and gained a wealth of information. And so I wanted to bring something like this back to our organization at Rockerbox. And it really started out of necessity because when I first started the organization, it was just me making the phone calls. And then when I had to finally start hiring a staff, we didn't all overlap so not everybody knew everybody because we kind of came in at shifts and so I literally bought a pizza one day and said hey can you all come in at this time and we'll eat pizza together and I want everybody to share with me what's our greatest strength and what's our greatest weakness and we started these three years ago and I started with you know three people around a pizza and now we've got like 50 people around you know piles of pizzas and essentially the idea is very very simple we we let our, our team know that this isn't a meeting this isn't a rolling down of information from corporate that has decided that we need to have these new policy changes. No, 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 it's the exact opposite of that. This is the opportunity where everybody in our organization has, ha, has a, a stage to stand on and say, from my perspective, from me being involved in the day-to-day -day activities, from my perspective, I think this is the thing that we're best at. And from my perspective, I think this is something that we kind of suck at, or this is an opportunity, or this is something that's kind of unclear. I've noticed Joey does it this way, but Sue does it that way. Like, how is, well, there's, there's an inconsistency there. And so we do this every single month in our business and have for the last three years so we can uncover what all these problems are and it's great for the business because we create all these policies and procedures and systems and checklists and all these things that have that have really really established the business as that it's a business uh, it's something that operates on its own just like each of you have again you've made the natural progression from a me myself and I operation to a team of generalists where you want to get is to be a team of specialists um, like Jeff said, it's not about do doing everything the best, but having the best people to do it for you. So do you own a system that people work for? And that's how we've been able to build that, is from their feedback from within the organization. So you guys have a ton of knowledge to gain from your own people who have different perspectives than you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you listen to them, and if you collaborate and mastermind together, you're probably going to come up with some really, really, really good stuff together. Uh, but again, tapping into the whole millennial thing, they love this stuff because it means that their, their opinion matters, right? Their insight counts. They have a voice within the organization. They all feel like entrepreneurs within the organization. And then the workshops was actually sort of a spinoff of the masterminds. We were doing masterminds every single month. And as our, um, 
as our org chart grew, we had another layer of, of leadership within our organization that we wanted to invest more in. And so we actually created another event, a monthly event we call our workshops. And at this one, we're actually bringing everybody out. Uh, we go to a local bar and grill and they feed us. And for about three hours, we actually do even more of a deeper dive in some skill building and role plays and all sorts of uh, different exercises to invest in, our, in the future leaders of our organization. And again, everybody within the organization is constantly reminded of this on a, on a uh, week to week basis, day to day basis, that there's all these opportunities for you to show up. This isn't just an ISA job where you're clocking in and following up with internet leads. You're showing up, you're given an opportunity to invest in yourself. You're surrounded by other like-minded like individuals that want to grow themselves and grow their careers. And it's great because some of the results that we've had is we've actually been able to retain a lot of our talent full time. A lot of the guys here today are actually had started with us as callers uh, one day and are now moving into management roles and sales roles and things of that sort. But we also boast that over the last three years, every single graduate, uh, Rockerbox graduate from Texas A&M has walked the stage with multiple job offers. And that's absolutely amazing because um, when we first started this, we realized there was a need where you know people weren't following up with their internet leads and so we needed to help them. But what's awesome is, is the result of what's come from Rockerbox is that we're not just helping move people down the sales pipeline, right? You know, taking the motivated buyer and handing them to the agent. Well, I also realized you know, that over the last several years, we've helped Spring has had, of the six of the last seven years, she's had the rookie of the year on her team. Right? This is someone that just walked into real estate brand new, had this foundation for success and crushed it. Right? That's someone else moving forward. And in addition to that, Spring her, herself has grown her business almost 3x since we started working together. She's grown her business. She's moved her business forward. And again, like I said, all of the people we've had graduate and move on to other careers that have multiple job opportunities, those people are moving forward. So I'm very, very proud to say that really who we are at Rockerbox, our, our, our purpose and our mission is really moving people forward. Right? That's what we're passionate about. And it comes out every single day in our daily activities. And our employees can see this and they can feel this and they, they know that they're a part of something more important than just following up with internet leads. And those are the types of things that millennials get a kick out of. So hope you got some, uh, some value out of that. I know I just got a couple more minutes here. just want to wrap up. Um, yep, again, employee retention. This is uh, something we call our wall of champions. We actually have our org chart posted up on our, on our wall so people can actually see like, hey, I'm the new guy down here and I work with this guy and I can clearly see the path that he took to get there. It's about three times the size of that now, but we do tailgate parties, we do Christmas parties, we have rocker box swag. Again, it's what we're creating here. It's a family. It's something, it's meaningful work. It's bigger than just clocking in and clocking out. So I hope you can take some tips from that and learn some things. Um, again, just wrapping up here, I want to kind of tie things together. Who, how in the heck we are involved with ERS. We uh, joined a partnership with ERS a year ago. For those of you who don't already know, uh, we've done a couple workshops with Jeff. In fact, last year we did one during the College World Series, which was a great time. I think we might even have a little secret about that later. But anyway, if you can ever come to Omaha during the College World Series, it's a really fun time. Um, but we've done some events with Jeff because, again, we understand that we can scrub the leads all we want to, but it's really the agent's activities that, that, that we rely on for our success. So we have a partnership with Jeff. Uh, I've been asked by a couple people, do we have any special offers? Um, I do have a special offer to make to you. Before I uh, jump to that, if we have about three more minutes, I was actually um, just talking with Trey Willard over here on the side about a, sort of a value proposition. We're talking about growing our teams and we're talking about, you know, what is it that you do as a team owner that, that, that benefits your team? And a, a lot of times there's, a, there's an issue with actually quantifying that value. So I've actually got something that I've been working on with my marketing coach recently that I'm gonna pass out. You guys can use an example. I'm just gonna run through it real quick. But this is something that I would highly encourage each and every one of you guys to do to sit through and quantify what the value proposition is for your business. Guys, if y'all could pass out the benefits and bonuses sheets. Um, we basically went through our marketing coach and our biggest competitor is basically someone doing the work themselves. Just like a lot of times you're in the same situation where your biggest competitor is someone doing the work themselves, whether it's a for sale by owner or whether it's maybe someone who's on your real estate team who's, who decides, you know what, this seems really easy. I think I can go do this on my own. Or maybe it's a brand new agent who's thinking, well, I think I might just go do the broker model. I might just go do it on my own. There's a lot of people that we have conversations with on a daily basis that think that they can go and do it better on their own. And so this is, like I said, this is a sheet I've been working on with my marketing coach. So I'd love to get your feedback on it. But essentially we went through and we compared ourselves. We compared Rockerbox to what it would cost if you actually did it on your own. So 
I'm going to run through the sheet real quick, but I want you to start thinking about what are the things that you offer your agents? You guys buy AdWords. You guys invest in CRMs. You guys invest in all sorts of marketing. You guys invest in uh, the physical office space, right? But if you look at what it actually takes to duplicate what we have at Rockerbox, well, we're an 80-hour week call center. So 80 hours a week times an entire year is about a $41,600 value. And then like I already talked about, that person doesn't just exist on their own. You've got to go find that person. So there's a finder's fee or recruiting fee. Let's say conservatively that might be a $3,500 value. Uh, we already talked about training that person, right? They don't just come already trained. So now you have to invest your resources or someone else's resources in actually training that person. We'll say that's a $2,000 value. And then you don't just want to throw this person in the corner and leave them on their own. The reason why our callers thrive and get better at their job every single day is because of our leadership team. So you have to support them with some leadership, some full-time leadership. So that would be two managers. Let's say $72,000 for that. Again, we already talked about all the investment that we bring in our masterminds and in our workshops. You guys all paid a pretty penny to be in this room today, right? So why is it that there's not still value in me going back to my office and sharing the exact same information? Is there not value in that, right? We've all invested in our success. We've all invested in our education. We want to go back and share that with our teams. There's value in that. You know, Trey is a coach for Tom Ferry. His team has full access to him all the time. What would it cost if you went through Tom Ferry to try to hire one of his coaches to be in your office for five days a week? That'd probably be really expensive, right? Put, put a value to that. We do our workshops. There's a value to that. Not only are we buying them food and drinks, but again, we're investing in their success. People pay money. People invest in education. Put a value to that. Let's say uh, $9,000. And then obviously you have your physical space. You're obviously in technology. A lot of you invest in that as well. Obviously we're a done for you service. We've invested in office and technology. And so you create all that, and those are your main deliverable services, and that's going to give you your general uh, value here. So for Rockerbox, we said it's $137,100 value to do all the things that we're doing. But here's the other little tip, and this is kind of a secret that my uh, marketing coach shared with me, but you have a bonuses section at the bottom, right? What are some extra items that maybe people don't normally think of that you can toss in and create some more value around? So we have our ramp-up program. Zach uh, Stevens in the back of the room, he's our ramp-up coach. He meets with all of our clients over a video conference call each uh, month to make sure that they're staying up with their leads. There's value in that. Like I said, we did our partnership with ERS. Every single one of our clients gets to attend Jeff's meetings. There's value in that. It's $204 a year. Uh, we also have an annual contest where we go out and visit our uh, top client of the year. There's value in that. Uh, and then we're also writing a book. It should be out later this year. I've got my beautiful fiance in the back fixing all my grammatical errors, but as soon as that's done, we'll get that in your hands. So you create all that value, but here's the tip, is you wanna make sure that your bonuses the value of the bonuses is more expensive than whatever your service is. That's the little trip. So again, this is what everybody wants right here. Yeah, nobody's going to, nobody's, are any of y'all going to write me a check for $137,100 a day? No? Okay. So none of y'all are going to do that. But if you can add the value of the bonuses and say that the bonuses is more valuable than all of your services together, which for Rockerbox, we're only about 12000 annually. So again, the bonuses is 18000 when it's only about twelve grand annually. So again, take that home, guys. Dissect it. I'm, I'm a firm believer my, uh, in the R&D department, rip off and duplicate. So uh, have fun with that. But that's sort of our um, you know, valuation of the services that we offer. We've also got a contract in there as well because, again, you don't just want to work with anybody. Um, we, we consider ourselves a family. And just like I wouldn't let anybody date my daughter, uh, I'm not going to let anybody work with my ISAs. So there's an application process. We want to make sure that you're serious about your business and, and doing the things that you want to do to improve your business. But for those of you who do actually are not already existing clients, you do actually want to get moved forward uh, with Rockerbox, I want to make you a very special offer today. Again, I'm really excited. This is the first annual team building summit. Um, for those of you who are, who are ERS clients, um, as a long-standing discount since we partnered up a year ago, we've been offering, and we offer no discounts at all. We're partnered with a lot of other coaching firms, but Jeff is the only organization that we offer a discount to. It's a $500 discount, so it's not $2,000 setup fee, it's $1,500. But I wanted to do something special for you, and Jeff, I don't even think I told you about this yet. But I really, really, again, appreciate each and every one of you taking the time out of your lives to invest in being here today in the first annual Team Building Summit. Uh, when you guys sign up, um, for the, today or tomorrow, before we leave at the event, we're going to lock you in at just $1,003 for your setup fee. I'm going to take your 497 
your ticket price, and I'm going to comp that towards your setup fee for Rockerbox. For those of you who know that you need to be doing this, it's, again, it's not a question of you know, whether or not you're going to be following up with your leads. It's just who's going to do it. So if you guys have determined that, that this is a good solution for you, I'm going to make you a very special offer. Again, we never offer any discounts. It's $500 off if you're an ERS client. But just for being here today, I'm going to take your, your, uh, your team building summit uh, ticket and comp that on your, start, uh, your setup fee. So you're going to save $997 if you want to go ahead and move forward and get started uh, while we're here. Anyway, guys, again, my name is Josh Cunningham. Hope you learned some uh, conversion secrets. Hope you learned about millennial engagement. I'll be here for the next couple of days. So thanks.